Before we go into our study tonight, what I want to do is quickly take you through part of my own experience in regard to ministry. So I want to, I got some photos as well, and so if we can dim the lights for that. Now as I said the other night, I and I've been an Adventist my whole entire life. But when I got to 28, 29 years of age, I came to a severe personal crisis. And I discovered at that time that I did not know what I needed to know so that I could survive my crisis. At that time, God led me to study the message that was brought to this church 128 years ago, nearly 129 years now, and there I found the answers that I needed, and I do not believe that I would be alive today if I did not have their message, and to probably a degree, I consider that I had a small taste of what the time of trouble will be in my personal crisis. And I can tell you that there is no other message that will bring you through than the message of Christ our righteousness that was brought to the church in 1888. No other message. And tonight and tomorrow, tomorrow, hopefully by God's grace, this will become clear. This message saved my life and so it became my life. God blessed me with with my business where I was working on my own, and I would work 12, 13 hours a day operating machinery. And so I would have an MP3 player and some sound isolating earplugs, and I would listen 12 hours straight. Alan Wyatt, Alonzo Jones, John Bunyan, Charles Spurgeon, Martin Luther, the man whom God raised up for a purpose in their generations. And history, it was lovely to study prophecy as the pioneers taught it and then go through and study history and then go through and study Ellen White and then go back through the Bible in audio. I was looking for the character of God and he became clearer and clearer in my understanding to the point where I could no longer live my life the way I was. I had found the pearl of great price, but I couldn't keep it to myself. And so I sold everything that I had, I gave up my business, and I began to travel. Now, I want to share with you something to begin with tonight, very precious, because there is a scripture here. Many of us are afraid to leave everything behind and serve Christ. We're afraid of sacrifice because we think it's going to hurt. We think we're going to miss out on the things that we want to do. But it's actually the opposite. Because there are things in my life that I always wanted to do. And since I left everything to serve Christ... I've been able to do the very things I thought I never could do. And so it's very important that I show you some of these things. And one of the things I want to show you is a list of my every earthly possession. And uh, maybe when you see my list, you can go home tonight and you can compare it with what your own list would be. And I can tell you, That everything that's on my list of my earthly possessions is everything I need. I have perfect peace. I have peace and I have joy. I never ever think, oh, I wish I had this or that. Except there's one thing. When I was in um, South America, I really wanted some peanut butter and honey on toast. I really missed that. In fact, I find that's the only thing I crave, just some peanut butter and honey on bread. Sorry about that. 
Because there's one thing we must learn, especially as so-called Christians. All things work together for good. Technical glitches, sudden amplifications of sound. You drop a pen, you lose your keys. Everything works for good. If you love God and accord according to His purpose, and that's your choice whether you are. So if ever there's a delay in any meeting or anything, don't stress. If things go a little bit later than you would like, don't stress. Many of you sit through movies for two, two and a half hours, so what's a sermon for one and a half? But I'll try and keep it late, early, earlier tonight. Okay, now I have lost this again. I have no idea. All things work together for good, remember? All right? God's testing you. Are you going to believe him or not? Remember what is faith? What is faith? Do you remember? That's it. His word will fulfill itself. But it depends on one thing. You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it won't fulfill it in your life, but it will in someone else's. Because someone will believe him, but will you believe him? Personally, I find little glitches and complications keep life interesting. And I can tell you, it's the story of my life. Remember the story of the truck that I told you the other night? When the farmer saw me destroy his trailer, and he came to me and he said, Cameron, are you going to destroy everything I own? Well, I didn't destroy everything. Why did I get my money, a raise of pay? Well, the previous year I had written off his truck, but his truck was insured at $50,000. It was written off. He bought it back for $5,000. He spent $5,000 on repairing it. He found a backyard panel beater, he got new parts, new everything. Fixed up problems that it had previously. He paid for a contractor to finish the, uh, the carting, the, the grain to the silos for the season that I was supposed to do. And he actually profited $25,000 from me totaling his truck. <laughs> and so the next year, he said, hey, Cameron, coming back to work? I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> he goes, I'll give you pay rise. I said, okay. So next year, I totaled his trailer. And his trailer was very, very old, and he got a better trailer. And he was very happy with his new trailer. <laughs> At the same time I totaled the truck, I bought a car, and that car died, and so I went out without a car for a number of months, until finally someone bought me a car, and within three weeks of this car they bought me, I drove a bale of hay straight up the rear end of that, and I totaled the car. But I bought the wreck back. It was insured at $5,000. I paid $500 to buy the wreck. I paid, um, I, I paid the rest of the insurance. I paid the excess. And I bought another car perfectly identical with it. And if you're familiar with Mazdas, Mazda car parts are very expensive. And so I ended up, and in fact I found out that the car that I was bought to begin with the motor was on its way out. And the car that I got was identical, but it had a good, reliable motor. But now I had spare parts. And there was one night where um, it was one, I was driving with someone, and they were driving it, and they fell asleep at the wheel, went up a up the curb, took out a lot of the signposts on the side, and smashed up the whole front end. So the next morning, I just got up, I pulled off the bumper, I pulled off the, uh, the hood, I pulled off the headlights, I pulled off everything, put it on the other, on the car we'd smashed up, went, went to a Bible study that night, and no one knew that we had literally become this close to death the previous night because we skidded along a, a four-meter gully. So all things work together for good. And the sooner we learn this, the better. Trust me. Okay, this is everything I own in the world. I own seven shirts, three pairs of pants. I have two casual ones and one formal ones. 
I have two short sleeve t-shirts, three sets of thermal underwear, two pajama pants, seven pairs of socks, seven pairs of what we call in English jocks. I don't know if you call it in American or not. Underwear? Okay. Sorry, you speak American, I speak English. <laughs> did you catch on that one, did you? And I have one suit, and I forgot to put, I also have another spare black jacket that you saw me wearing this week. I have one pair of casual walking shoes, and I have one pair of church shoes. I have two ties, I have one scarf, one pair of gloves, and two beanies. I have a big thick one, like a Russian one, for when it's really cold, and a standard one. And I have an iron. And yes, I carry a full-sized iron in my backpack. And then everything else I have is one Bible, I have a laptop, I have a tablet, I have two mobile phones, I keep an old one as a spare, and I have a camera. That is everything I own in this world. And it, well, that's it. I'll show you the bags in a moment. But this is my monthly expenses. I spend $49 a month on my Adobe software subscription so I can work on publishing and editing and videos and things like that. I pay $10 a month for my Dropbox account and in Mexico at the moment we pay $5 a month for the mobile phone to make phone calls, unlimited phone calls, WhatsApp, whatever. Compare your monthly bills with mine. Now this here is, forget, forget this here, this was my suit bag because I had two suits but I recently gave one away and I thought, well, if I just carry an iron, I don't need my, other, my suit bag. I can just iron my suit when I need it. So this here is my bag and I, this bag, God gave me. In 2015, in May, I said, Lord, I want to run with this message. I want to go from country to country, place to place, like you say. And I need a backpack, and I don't have the money. Three weeks later, I was walking along a river on a Friday night, and here was this North Face 65-litre hiking pack under a tree with a sign that said, free. And so I said, okay, God, I'm going. And I got on a plane, and I haven't stopped since. I uh, obviously, you know, my little carry-on bag kind of thing. Now, you saw my list of things back here, and they fit into this bag here. Now, when I got married last year, I said to my wife, I said, I might have to get rid of some of my things so I can put your things in my bag. Thinking, you know, she's going to have a bit of overflow, right? Uh, the blue bag there is her bag. I don't carry any of her things. Everything she owns fits into a bag 15 litres smaller than my bag. And guess what? She's a woman. Absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. So that is everything that we own in this world, and we are free. We have joy, we have peace. We can go wherever God sends us. Now, there is a scripture here, Psalm 36, 37, verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. This verse is so true. Amen. Especially if you will stand in the way of the Lord, and you will do Walk in the way of the Lord. There was one place that many, many people want to visit. And I always wanted to visit. But I thought I never could. And one year I thought, okay, I'm going to spend my money on, and I'm going to go visit this place. But I thought, no. I'm going to spend my money instead on beginning to build my ministry. And I had to go to South America after I visited with you that very week. I flew down to South America 18 months ago. And I flew via Lima. I had to go through to Bolivia. And on the plane from 
from Florida to Lima, I sat next to the daughter of some missionaries that run an orphanage. And I was talking to her about the message and she said, you have to come and share this message with my parents. I said, okay, where are they? I've got, I've got time. I go wherever the invitation is. And she said, well, they, they had run an orphanage in Cusco. Now, there's one place I always wanted to visit. Machu Picchu. Which is right next to Cusco. And so the Lord said, Cameron, I know you want to visit Machu Picchu. And so here, go and visit this family, share the message with the parents, and you can visit Machu Picchu. And yes, the classic picture. It's uh, quite an experience, the place, actually. But now, there was one, another thing I always wanted to see was castles. Who here would love to see castles? Yeah? Well, I thought, well, all the castles in Europe, I'll never get to see castles. I don't have the money, I'm too busy with work, etc., etc., etc. Well, after being in South America, I was asked if I could go across to Europe. And uh, I arranged some meetings there as well. And so I went to Europe, and this castle is Dracula's castle in Transylvania. I mean, of all the castles that you could visit, I mean, wow, Dracula's castle. And so I got to visit Dracula's castle, and it's actually not very scary at all. In fact, it had a beautiful atmosphere. It was very peaceful. Dracula is a lie. It's a made-up story. Someone just used a description of the castle in a fiction novel. Now... Someone forgot their bicycle in Copenhagen. <laughs> and it's literally covered in ice. And so there are lots of castles in Denmark. And so I w went to Denmark as well to do some recordings and on some of the Adventist networks. And so I got to go and visit another castle. And this one's, you know, I got off YouTube, but it's an old, old thing. It's got a moat around it, it's got a drawbridge, it's got everything you think a castle is. So there's the moat, and that's the inner square. And then there's another castle as well. There's lots of, lots of castles. I, I got to see lots of castles. And I was just following, doing what the Lord wanted me to do. He gives us the desire of our hearts. And now, this, the color doesn't show here, but those of you who have been to the Caribbean, you know how blue the water is there. We, in just teaching the message, have been asked to go to a Caribbean island. And, you know, we get free accommodation staying in the church while we're teaching the message, while all the tourists are paying thousands of dollars for their holiday, and we get to swim in the same beach for free. <laughs> it's just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they doesn't show the, the justice. And there's, you know, lots of ruins and different sites. You know, everybody loves archaeology. I mean, this is uh, Tia Tiwakan, and yes, that is my, my new wife, Eladia. She is an absolutely lovely lady. Uh, you couldn't imagine. I really wish she was here with me. So you, some of you have probably heard of Tia Tiwakan. Maybe some of you have been there. It's an amazing place amazing place. It's huge, big pyramids, everything. And this is one particular thing you get to travel is you get to get away from the GMO zone. Ha, ha, ha. You know what I mean by that? This corn is organic corn grown in volcanic soil, and yes, it is twice the height of my wife, and she's about 150 centimeters tall. A seriously tall healthy, proper corn. Alonzo Jones actually said that the day will come when every Seventh-day Adventist in America will wish that they were out of the country. As he says, this country had more light than anyone else, and so it will be more despotic than any other country. And he says, God gave the command, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. But everyone decided, no, 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 I want to stay comfortable. And I believe he's correct. And the, 
those that do not today do all in their power to fulfill the commandments of Christ regarding the proclamation of the message, the time will come when they will deeply regret it. And if you're good, you get an ice cream. (laughs) In the service of the Lord, it's absolutely fantastic. You get to experience the desires of your heart. The very things that you always wanted to do. And now we, we travel and we speak with people. We go from place to place. But we actually do not ask anyone for a single cent. We get an invitation. If we've only got $50 in the bank account or in cash, that's our bus tickets to go there. And we go. We leave it with God to get us to our next destination. We don't ask. I mean, these books are being given away for free. Austin asked me to begin with, do you want us to get some money for them? I said, no. I freely receive the gospel. I freely give. And even if you find the book on Amazon, there's no profit in that for me. I have just dropped the price down as close as possible to cost price. And they've got to take their cut out. And you can't quite see this well, but the desires of thine heart, one of the greatest desires was to marry a woman that loved the message more than she loved me. And my wife, Eladia, she fell in love with the message before she fell in love with me. And uh, in April last year, we got married, and it's been a huge blessing because we, we work as a team. We work together. The dress that she's wearing, I have to tell you this, is 70 years old. A friend of hers in uh, the city of Saltillo, where she was working in Mexico, doing volunteer health work, she was visiting with a friend, and the friend said, do you have a wedding dress? And she said, no, I don't have a wedding dress. She goes, well, okay. You might fit something. And so she had, this lady had her own mother's wedding dress. It is 100% silk made in northern Spain. And ever since her mother got married, all of the children and their daughters-in-laws have all tried on this dress to see if it would fit them. And it didn't fit any single one of them. Yes, the sister over there said Cinderella. Yes, it's a bit of a Cinderella story. And so Eladia, the lady pulled this dress out and Eladia put it on. Perfect. God planned our marriage 70 years before it even happened. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful dress. uh, Ask me ladies tomorrow if you want to see what the dress was actually like. And so this is an introduction to our ministry. If you think that it's a sacrifice to give things up for God, reject the thought. If you want true joy and you want true happiness, serve God. Amen. Believe me. I've, I'm someone who's, who's, who's drove, driven in fancy cars. I've owned them. Someone who's lived comfortably in homes. Someone who's had everything that you've all got but I never had the joy that I have now. I never had the peace that I have now. And the time is coming where everything you own, you will lose. And so what's easier? Is it it better to just give it up or would you rather someone take it away? Someone takes it away, you've got nothing to show for it. If you give it up today... You might have a little bit of money that you can invest in starting your own ministry. Print some books, print some flyers, go and do something, start working for the Lord. 